Get a lean in about a half throttle. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another snow running video with the sledge. I found this cover. So if you watched the last video I did with the sledge, I was out in the snow and I had a lot of packed snow in here, all in all the little crevices, round the motor, round the EAC, round the servo, everywhere. And I was looking through my covers because I knew I had one for my X-Max. So my plan today was to actually go out with the X-Max. I already have the paddles on it. I reapplied all the Velcro for the cover and then forgot that I had broke it the last time I was out and I still haven't changed the little servo horn. And I didn't feel like doing that today. I just wanted to get out and run because the snow was really coming down. And I just want to head up to the top of the street and kind of run on the road and snow banks and all that kind of stuff. While I was looking for that cover, I found this one. I have no idea what this is for, but it mounted up no problem. Everything, I mean, I had to always have guys the Velcro on hand. So in my opinion, guys, and it's something I've never thought about before when it comes to these covers is, my guess is a lot of the one eight scale covers are probably the same. You know, you have stretchy, it's, you know, there's a little bit of elastic kind of in here. So if you get a cover and then just make sure you have some Velcro, like you need the more grippier, um, not the fluffy kind part of the Velcro, this stuff right there. If I can get that to focus. Okay, come on, you can do it. There we go. Anyways, uh, you can probably just apply that to other cars and then just use your one cover. Again, I'm not guaranteeing that because I don't even know what this cover, cover came off of. I don't know what I had bought it for, but either way, guys, uh, we are headed out. As you can see, the snow is coming. We, uh, according to the weather network, we're supposed to have the biggest storm this year right now. We're supposed to get over a foot of snow, but they've told us that already a couple times this year. And All right, guys, we're out here. I got the cover on, everything's powered up. I've switched to my rugged, so if I'm standing in the snow and getting soaking wet, I'm not getting all the wet and the snow and everything on my 7PX. But here's hoping this goes well. Again, I'm hoping that the cover is gonna help kind of deflect the snow more. So instead of it kind of sitting in all the crevices and all the areas of the chassis, that it'll just hopefully get right through or I don't know, something. Either way, we're gonna find out right now. It's nice because the plows haven't gone by yet. Oh God. Because as soon as the plows go by, I'm gonna lose all my snow. Or at least on the street anyways. I think it's gonna be too heavy in there. And hopefully I don't get a bunch of snow all over the lens today. Oh yeah. realized I'd switched to the rugged but I didn't adjust my steering. Yeah. Wow, this thing moves. That's like three quarters throttle guys right there. That's just insane. This 1650 in the sledge is like perfect. I don't think we ever, I don't know if this is gonna work out. If I keep these bad boys spinning. Whoa, we're moving now. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, like I mentioned guys, I didn't kind of tweak anything. I just threw the rugged, like the Spectrum receiver in, bound it up and calibrated and that was it. I should have adjusted for my steering because my one throw is awful right now, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, 1650 in paddles is awesome. Let's see what we can do here and not hit my car. <laughs> the 
This guy's is like perfect. Between the paddles, the motor, the sledge, tons of power. crazy what having all that power does for ripping through that deep snow. Come on baby! Oh yeah! Unstoppable. <laughs> Jeez. This thing is so fast. Oh, I can't see myself. There I am. This is like perfect conditions, guys. Hopefully I don't have a bunch of snow on the lens or anything like that right now. Because I always find it's annoying when you have a big drip. Oh, jeez. Keep it going, keep it going. Leaning about a half throttle. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh no, I'm gonna go into that tree. Oh, come on, old girl, let's go. Oh, I think we're stuck. Just walking through here now, guys, you can see probably a good maybe six inches maybe even deeper in some parts so yeah the fact I was I had slowed down because I thought I was gonna go into the trees and you can see how close I was Ooh, she's getting heavy though and try to brush some of the snow off All right, guys, I just kind of cleaned a little bit of the snow off this bench. And pretty much the only snow I really got packed is just around the arms and the wheels. That's not a great place for it, though. But in here, guys, was pretty much hardly any snow on it at all, which is nice. Because that keeps everything, you know, not getting in there, not getting in all the little crannies and melting and then freezing and all that fun stuff. But yeah. I mean, I'm taking the time to do this. And as soon as I put it down, it's just going to be uh, caked with snow again. But either way, we're going to try ripping around here. The hill doesn't seem to have as much snow, probably because all these, there's always kids uh, sliding on it, walking up it and stuff like that. My kids are always here, so either way, let's keep this going. 
again as i mentioned to you guys at the beginning of the video we're supposed to get like almost a foot of snow so at some point it's gonna be way too much to run up here oh that didn't work there we go I keep thinking I'm gonna hit something. Ah. Oh, we're stuck again. <laughs> Completely missed that. As soon as it hooks up, it goes though. Ah, oh, my friggin' steering. I wonder if I can adjust that right now quickly. All right, guys, just kind of keep checking over everything. And I just adjusted my steering, so I kind of increased my travel, which I usually like to kind of fine tune things, but for today, I just want to keep this going. And yeah, I can turn now. That's awesome. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Oh, come on. Okay, I guess I need to lighten this up a little better. We lost throttle. Wonder what happened. Oh, wait. I hear something. Well, I'm gonna have to look up, guys, what that is. I don't know if it's thermal, maybe. All right, guys, as always, we are home. The truck is back on the bench. It's all cleaned up. And two things I wanna get out of the way first. One was the beep. Yes, that was LVC. That's why I threw that little snippet up on the screen. I guess I'm kind of not used to running the 1600 milliamps in the winter on paddles where you're not really rolling. A lot of times when I've been out with the paddles and the 1600s, I was either on the road, I wasn't in the super deep snow. So when you kind of let off, you could let off more. Right now, as soon as I got into the park area, you, you have to be on the throttle, you know, half, three quarters full to keep the truck going. So yeah, it's gonna deplete the battery a little bit faster. Uh, second thing, guys, is the cover. Again, I'm sorry, I don't know what this cover came off of. I must have bought it for a vehicle. It looks brand new, so I doubt I ever used it. I don't know what it is, but I believe that if you really did pick up a chassis or a cover for something like a Creighton, an Erivo, whatever, they're probably all the same because this thing, guys, goes on no problem. I had the Velcro all ready for it, so it kept everything clean. It kept everything from going into any of the chassis parts or anything like that. I did notice like a few uh, drips of water and stuff like that in there, but that was it. So the cover was perfect. It did exactly what I wanted to do. It kept the snow moving. Yeah, I got some pretty good clumps around the arms. Inside the tires guys had quite a bit, which is always kind of sucky because this is kind of the worst place to have weight. But overall, cover did exactly what I wanted. 
the ESC and the motor were good. I did at one point when I was, I forget what I was checking. I just kind of stuck my hand in and everything was normal temperature. So we were good to go that way. All right, now something I want to show you guys. First, yes, I have stickers on the bottom of my chassis. I did that because it's winter time. I'm going to be running over snow. And for the most part, these will probably stay on here. Come the spring and summer, yeah, they'll be gone. But for now, I think they look cool and I like that. But what I wanted to show you guys was this again. So if you can remember, my last run stopped because the screw had came out. I didn't realize it at the time, but this thing had kind of like came unfit. I don't know what the proper term is, but anyways, it had moved and my steering and everything kind of went wonky. When I got home, I realized what it was. I'd actually shoved it back in, not realizing when I was out that time. And I was like, oh, everything works again. I don't know why this screw keeps backing off. It's the only one. I know in the beginning, the first couple of runs with this truck, I did have an issue up here. I know the screw head came out. I don't know if it pulled out. I don't know if it stripped. When I put the screw in and I tighten it up, everything feels good. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. Now, the one thing it is doing is it's kind of making me a little more anxious to get my Vitavon parts in because I'll be able to obviously Loctite all that stuff in and hopefully this thing will stay together. Again, I kept running today, guys, with it. I didn't have any issues. I didn't have to stop running. But yeah, you obviously want your screws to stay in your truck. So that'll be something, guys. Again, very soon I'm going to get to installing those parts. All right, guys, I got the cover off just because, man, this truck looks friggin' awesome. ESC, fan, the motor, the chassis, those orange arms, the orange wing. It's its literally, guys, like a work of art now. I love looking at this truck. I honestly lug it around sometimes. I bring it upstairs. It sits beside me sometimes when I'm having a drink at night because I just think it looks that good. The next video you see of this truck is going to be here. It's going to be in the shop, and I'm going to do kind of a review. Not the basic review where it's like, hey, this is what's good, this is what's bad you know, rate all this stuff. Because unfortunately guys, or not really unfortunately, but in my opinion, this truck now is, is heavily modified that a lot of what made it a Traxxas truck is gone and it's been replaced with awesome stuff. Some parts were Traxxas. I've got the upgraded ring and pinion gears, all that kind of stuff. And they've been awesome, obviously running a 1650 KV with no issues. But what I'm gonna be doing guys is kind of basically talking about my experience with the truck from the start to where the truck sits now. So going over some of the different motors I used, the stock motor mount going to the KCRC motor mount, the inserts now that I have on the motor, the slightly looser mesh between the pinion and the spur that I have, that ESC, the OMG servo, Basher Queen carbon fiber shock towers, and just the overall experience, if you wanna call it that, with the sledge. Uh, spoiler alert, obviously you guys know I am loving this truck now, but it wasn't always that way. And to be really fair, if, if somebody was to come to me today and say, hey, you know what, I'm walking into a hobby store or I'm going online and I can buy a Creighton EXB, I can buy a Kronos XTR, I can buy a Trax Sledge, you know, what, what should I do? You know what, I would have to really kind of talk to that person and kind of read what they're into and what they're looking for. Do they just want to build a basher? Do they just want to build something that's going to be fast? Or are they looking for something that they can heavily modify and have it be very, very customized, have it look, you know, maybe they're going for more flashy things like I did, guys. I did the orange arms almost right away after the first time I broke one arm, I did the orange arm. So yeah, again, guys, that'll be in another video. Uh, you know, again, it's it's going to be good. Obviously, a lot of times when I do Traxxas reviews, they don't go well, or when I've, not necessarily reviews, but when I talk about Traxxas cars and trucks, they don't go well. But hey, this thing now, guys, is just an absolute beast. And it's it. I'm not even going to lie, guys. It's probably my favorite truck. Now, I'm not even going to steer away from it. It is probably one of my favorite trucks because it looks the part. It drives the part. It's ridiculously fast. And it's just overall awesome. But it all came with a nice high price. But anyways, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. You are watching this right now. Or if you're watching it the day it came out, guys, hey, it's uh, Christmas Eve. We're going to have a great couple of days. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe and Merry Christmas.